Welcome to Instant Discussions. Yes. My name's John. This is Stefan. Hi. This is Tony. Hello. Strada. Rochelle. This is our special Laura. guest. Tell us a little about yourself, Stefan. This is the first episode. Oh, uh, I went to school. Um, yeah. I, I, I graduated and everything. It was fun. It was uh, Cal State. And uh, pretty much I've been doing uh, various work and jobs and stuff. And uh, I play a lot of video games. And yeah. Well, I'm Tony. Um, let's see, I like to shoot guns, and I like to shoot my bow and arrow, and I do improv sometimes. I play video games and read comics. I don't know, I have a son, 11 years old. Wow. Yeah. Cool. I'm Rochelle, and I guess I'm here because I'm Mormon and an actress. <laughs> so, yeah. Very good reasons. <laughs> Gotta have a token. <laughs> but let's lead off in a discussion of... Clean Flicks, from 2009. So first I want to say, if you have not watched this movie, stop this now, go watch it, and then please come back and watch this again. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Bin, bin. Clean Flicks. We will be discussing a lot of Clean Flicks. Also, unintentional spoiler alert, if you haven't seen any of the movies that they show clips from in this, um, oh, too yeah. bad. Because they don't really spoil things in those no, clips. No, not really. I didn't catch that. Except if you didn't know that Pretty Woman was about a prostitute, then and they spoiled that. didn't know that they... Well, they, didn't, they couldn't actually clean that one up. No, but they talk about that one. Yeah, they do. Yeah. That, was, that was one they said they could not clean up because the subject matter. The subject yeah, matter. Yeah, that one in Sin City. And if you which are pretty much the same, ones, the same yeah. movie, I think. A couple of other ones. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to say about this movie is... The only technical note I really have on it is there was no narration. It was just text. Oh, oh yeah, those kind of yeah. Yeah. annoying. Yeah, that 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 uh, speaks to not being like a. I think any like legitimate documentary usually has a narration or something. They don't make you read the whole time. Yeah, unless Morgan Freeman would have been nice. Morgan Freeman would have been a great addition to it. The problem yeah. was in the budget. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> something's telling me. <laughs> But they definitely shot this thing over a, over quite a period of time because there were you know interviews going back to like 2000, 2001. So well, um, I don't want to reveal the twist yet. No, no. It, it makes a lot of sense that they're, it seemed to me like they're, they're like, oh, we kind of got something, not something much. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah. They're, Years they're like, later, now we got something. Once they finally had a had something yeah. something more interesting than just like these people are selling some movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think though, I think that the the reason that they might have I don't know because when you use voices, um, there's a lot that of undertones and stuff that could be. Yeah, and you can kind of get judgmental with the narration, and, and yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it sounds like it's taking one side. What they kind of use a lot of it, they they use the news reports to to kind of narrate it um, when they don't have the audio for it. And it was interesting because there were a lot of moments in the film as I rewatched it, and I was noticing I had forgotten that they were text instead of narration. I thought that they had been spoken in some parts, but uh, so it, I think it you kind of get used to it after a while. Um, yeah, that was that could have been nicer. I wish they had that. It, but even well, like even speaking of the whole like bias thing. I mean, that's why you know I think that they did that was because they just didn't want to sound have that bias sounding yeah. one way or the other. Although I think that. Um, and I think they actually did a pretty good job avoiding bias. I think for the most part on the... On the uh, there was probably a couple moments where I was just like, ah, yeah. Ah. But, but you, hear from, you hear from both sides, and they definitely... Um, yeah. They, I don't know, they kind of go strong on... Uh, it's a little more towards Hollywood side, but... Uh, yeah. 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 But they, it's... That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so it <Right>. starts... <laughs> it starts off with... The 1986 LDS conference, where uh, Ezra Taft Benson, yes. LDS brother, yes, your fact checker here, yes, Make sure that's, <laughs> that's correct. Uh, where he's he said he had proclaimed and asked that uh, all the LDS <clears throat> not watch R-rated movies or play vulgar video games. So I kind of understand that as the same thing as when the Pope. When the Pope speaks for Catholics, that's it's taken as the Word of God, and so you follow that. Is that the, kind of the same way? Yeah, that? it's the same way. Okay, so uh, if you watch this movie, <laughs> it has clips in it from these these films. And as I was watching it the second time, I realized that. I was realizing, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I actually have the habit because I I watch a lot of various movies. I have the habit of just going. Okay. 
<laughs> so you don't you just don't see so, those parts. So I know I know the various cues of when people have stopped having sex or when they've stopped making out or when they've stopped killing each other. <laughs> that works. That works. So you do your own editing, kind I of like that the yeah. clear vision or clear view uh, <laughs> software. Where it just I think that uh, in one of Eli Roth's films, he had uh, the he had a mode on the DVD where it has two hands come up over the screen as if they were covering your eyes during all the gory parts. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's a, that's a good way to edit it. Because it's still, because then you still know what's going on in the film and you kind of get that in there. Yes. So, uh, can I just say, right from the beginning, I really, I was hooked because you have this, you know, one of the top uh, Mormon leaders crying about pornography. Oh. It was just like, I was like, oh my gosh, this guy's He's emotion about yeah. just yeah. pornography. Yeah, it's a very passionate subject. <laughs> it really is. We feel like, at least from my, from what I've heard, like growing up, pornography is like for us, like basically the root of where everything bad comes from, and it's so mm. addicting and it's so detrimental to families. Like it's mm. just bad. <laughs> I'm yeah, all, <laughs> all, all that. Uh, I think it's very good for the soul. Cleansing. Where's cleansing? God. Uh, uh, but that's that's one thing that they 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 speak of in here a lot, especially in the beginning, is that they they say that the uh, the ideas of the bad ideas lead to bad actions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's that's what causes them, and that's kind of you know been in the news recently with that. Every time something yeah, happens, what they say, even gun violence and stuff. Yeah, again, blaming video games, blaming video stuff. games and, and stuff like that, yeah. which. In, in my mind, it's, I've seen, it, it, I always think back to before there were movies and before there were video games, and there was still the yeah. violence and the stuff. So those things, yeah. the things are there. Uh, so how much of that, yeah, it could be... I know Caligula wasn't watching Kill Bill. No, <laughs> well Caligula wasn't watching Caligula either. No, no, no. No. <laughs> no. But, uh... Or even the Andervals. No. No, they were not. So... How much of it is ingrained, and then to some degree you can learn some things from them, but some of those ideas can still happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, it, does it really inspire people? To I think it, to... it more has to do with, well, the way I, I always saw it is evil is always like around you. We don't believe in original evil, like original sin, so we don't believe that people are inherently evil, but we believe that there's evil around us constantly. And so it just depends like how I feel it's like they're saying stay away from it because you don't know how influential you could be. You know, most people, you know, you can play a violent video game and you know, you're not going to go out and, and shoot up a bunch of people, but you know, you could be that one person who does. Yeah, that's the the thing of their uh, one of the arguments I like better is they're uh, talking about uh, in not in the movie but in uh, recent events uh, talking about trying to monitor mental illness more um, because that's that's the thing if the people who have the mental illness are those those are the people who are likely to do it and yeah. those could be influenced by. The video games by the by these movies uh, more so than it's not that anyone who watches them would do this exactly but it's some people could be so that's a that's one way to look at it on the other end of that um, I read a study where countries where they released where they made legal the really hardcore like rape porn rape rates actually went down and they're saying because they're able to get that out while watching porn which I thought was kind of interesting. That's what they kind of like the uh, that's 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 one thought on it. It's that kind of simulation thing, uh -huh. like you know playing Grand Theft Auto, and then you get all that aggression out, and you're you know, and then and then you're all relaxed, <laughs> <laughs> living vicariously uh, through that. Yeah, it's yeah. like if you if you kill like ten squirrels and you don't have to kill a human, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's usually a sign of the same kind of thing. Uh, I, I can only imagine it's the doctor going, right, the prescription is you need to go kill 10 squirrels <laughs> in Africa every day. Uh, that's the Dexter way of looking at it. Every day, noon, noon, and night. I guess. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs>
things. You want to rationalize it that way. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. That's so interesting. So in 2000, Ray Lyons uh, was asked to edit the movie Titanic because of its horrible, horrific graphic scene mm. where <laughs> yes. they were painting nudity. Yes. And that was an interesting one because it was, like, it was one of the first ones I remember of there being nudity in a PG-13 movie. Because it was artistic. Mm. Right, right. And she didn't move at all. It was like they, yeah. they allow in there, as long as there's no movement. And, and that's another thing of... And she was under 18. She was? Yeah. Or was she? Ah, I did not know that. I, I, think, she, I think she was 17 when they made that. She was just about to turn 18. Uh, hmm. All right. Well, well that's, that's, that's one of those things. Um, I think the bigger budget films generally get a lower rating than the higher budget film, or the, the, the low budget films. They were leaning to. Yeah. I, there's another documentary, uh, which is, uh, it's not rated R. Rated R is a different one. Um, oh, the, not the, this, this film is not yet rated. Oh, yes. Yeah. That one. They go in depth about, about how they get rated. Um, but, uh, so I think that's one of the things that kind of helped Titanic get, the, get that scene into the PG-13 movie. Normally that would be one that would be cut out. Um, and any other movie, especially one that's not doing such a, trying to do a historic film or trying to do that. When you get under the guise of, of doing a period accurate film, you kind of get away with a little more on that. Uh, one thing I like, later on in the film, they show a, uh, an editor who drew over Oh yeah, the film. I thought that was really cool. That was really good. Like the, the, the shirt. Yeah, they put a shirt amazing. on there. Yeah. Like that yeah, was that so amazing. Artistic. Good. Yeah, <laughs> like that was. It's much better than like you cutting out the scene or having it be like blurred or something yeah. over it. Oh, because you don't I even don't notice it. That you yeah. really don't notice. Okay. I mean, uh, I, no, I just the editing is interesting that they do. Yeah, but like we can talk about that. That's the next thing I was going to talk about in here. Is they say they say that when they they edit the films, they're no, no profanity, no graphic violence, no sexuality, and no nudity. Those are the, the things that Clean Flicks, right. that's what they, they propose. And the first clip they show, or they show a, film, a clip of Big Lebowski, and they say that the meaning of the film is still intact. Oh, man. And that, that scene <laughs> kind of, like... So torn. It, um, well, it, it was like he was laughing for no reason. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> and you're like, what's going on? Like it, it, they try to act like it doesn't take away, but it really does take away a lot. In, from, I think in some films, in some films, you can get away with it. Yeah, but like Titanic, it'd be films. fine. Yeah. yeah, but something like Big Lebowski. Um, and there, yeah, I, I, there's a and even like I can't remember the film. I didn't take a Saving Private Ryan. Was one they showed a clip of um, where that was one that they they were saying they they sent to the news. Yeah, that, like something like that. Like it was a little better. Yeah, um, I, I still felt though. I still felt though. The one thing that they still couldn't perfect with that is that the pacing is just totally shot. The pacing is the mm -hmm. is the problem that they run into. And and then, then some of the edges. I mean, that's just their quality of work. I think that we're still needed to be smoothed out. Yeah. Uh, personally, I think they're pretty hard cuts. But some people might not notice you. if the pacing is off. They might not notice that that's something a, a flaw of the editor. They might think yeah. that that's the original the original film being edited poorly. Yeah. yeah the the people who are watching these films, they're not going to know that... They're not going to know about pacing or, yeah. like, editing or anything like that. They're just yeah. going to be watching the movie because it's a good movie. And what what I have of that is a, uh, as a connoisseur of films, as, a, as someone who really likes filmmaking, uh, even uh, watching a movie on TV, you get this a lot, where... You, when the commercial breaks come in and they break up the action at certain points, and that's not how it was intended to be watched, yeah. so your judgment of the film is askew. Or, or, or when the little ad pops up for the next TV show. Comes yeah. On. But if it, so if they right, right, right in the middle of someone holding a gun to someone's yeah, head, right in the moment, and then there's a little show. So you yeah, have, yeah, but, yeah. but when you have the the pacing on this, it, in, in like say Private Ryan, and someone's uh, someone's holding a gun to someone, and then it just it, someone jumps in emotion. Like, they, the actor's been building an emotion in, in the scene. Yeah, yeah. They, they've been ratcheting something up. And then it, but it makes this, this super jump cut, and someone could think that's a poor job on the actor, a poor job on the editor, uh -huh. uh, or the director, and not notice, not realizing that it's been cut for, for another reason. And then that's probably one of my, one of the, I think, the strongest argument that Hollywood has, is just that, because it's just totally, their work isn't portrayed anymore. Yeah, oh, like all the work they did. It's it still got like, their name on it. 
Yeah, and, 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 and now, everyone's, everyone's now they're thinking, oh, this is what this this is this guy's work. You know, it, it's kind of what happens with a studio film too, with a director that doesn't have final cut, and his name's on a movie that he doesn't he doesn't like the finished product of it, and where they've you know taken names off of films before, but now they it's tough to really do that now that Alan Smithy is known to be a fake name, <laughs> but. Uh, their their names on something that they're not it's it's not what they it's not they theirs it's not theirs anymore it's no. yeah I, I I don't think that I think somebody I mean, watching it, these films who want it to be clean I think that they're not going to care and I think it's ridiculous that the the companies if they had them all ready for the uh, airplanes and things like that yeah that's just why not release it yeah the, their their interest there is that the reason that films get edited for airplanes in the first place is because internationally like. There are a lot of different standards, particularly like China and places like that. like it. Things. Yeah, they edit them for other. They're very for other so hard. So the, well, the, that's a good argument here. They say they um, the the they they were petitioning to try to get them yeah to release those films, and the studios would say there's not a uh, profitable. I think market I think them. the reason that they stopped they they is that it would be too easy to leak outside of that state, and then these copies would. Get outside to other states, get outside to other people, and I think that was probably one of their bigger fears. I mean, but DVDs are so cheap these days. Like to to create a DVD, I can't imagine it would be that expensive for this niche market for them to be able to cater to them. And I, I'm assuming they're even willing to pay more. It's, 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 it's not even about them making that money. It's more about them because right now, could you get a hold of an airplane copy of any movie? Oh, there is I can't. Airplane. I don't think I could. I mean, yeah. maybe maybe some people could, and if they really, really tried. Mm -hmm. But if once they started releasing it to anybody, mm -hmm. inevitably it's going to hit the internet. Yeah, yeah. Know, any other movie though. Yeah, but that's it's any other movie out there though. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know what what too much of a problem is with it it getting out there in the sense of if they're releasing it to some people, then I don't know for releasing it to more people. I yeah, mean, why not release it? I mean. The reason they say that there's not a market, I can see that there. If you look at how well something like The Hangover Two is does in the box office, it's making tons of money for them. So they see, well, why do we need to edit it? Because it's already making tons of money with the unedited version. We don't need to show the edited version of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they've got the edited version, I don't, I don't see why they can't release that to people who want it. I don't think Mormons would want to watch <coughs> The Hangover anyway. Yeah. No. Well. <laughs> I know a lot of Mormons Some, want to see it. I've seen Depends it, on, I don't know impressed. if the Utah Mormons want to. I don't know, like it. Some people like it. Yeah. Uh, I think it was overhyped for me. But, uh... So, I, I don't know. I, 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 know why the, I know why the artist doesn't want it to be released. Yes. Uh -huh. But then, the, the thing is, if I were the, the director of that movie, I wouldn't want the edited version to even be shown on airplanes. I, I like, I... It, it, the problem comes once you're allowing it to be edited for TV and for airplanes. Once you're once you're allowing that to happen, now you're just excluding one market from from watching something that you've already edited. Mm -hmm. And I and I think that's that's an issue there where they're they're just cutting it off. It's like Yeah, because I mean when you watch like uh, Pulp Fiction on TBS, it's a whole it's totally different. Well you don't watch Pulp Fiction on TBS. Well no, I know, but it's like there's so much cut. And it's like, if you're going to go that route, then they're already doing it. Or they should uh, watch quick Tarantino films on like PBS. <laughs> yes. right? There's this... <laughs> even, Great idea. I think it, it's TNT or one of those stations that uh, they are, they dub over the lines. Yeah, and they oh, get like famous TNT, for the, TNT, TNT, yeah, yeah. the uh, snakes on a plane. Get yeah. these monkey fighting snakes <laughs> on this Monday through Friday plane. Uh, yeah. Where it, just, it becomes its own comedy in the way that they're... <laughs> and now that editing. movies artistically ruined. It's, yeah. It's <laughs> I don't know. I kind of have an issue with the whole artistic integrity thing. Just because, yeah, it's art, and yes, you've worked on it for these hundreds of hours or weeks or whatever, mm -hmm. but what about all the other art out there? Like, the screen. How many versions of the screen have you seen? I know I had a Homer Simpson screen up in my dorm room. Art is always interpreted in different ways for different people. You just have to... I think parody is different. Yeah. Um, but they don't see it as parody. Well, like the I mean I don't you don't look so at the the Homer the Homer scream as like that's the that's the, the original scream. scream. Well, like, no, but what I'm saying is once you release art, that's mm -hmm. that's the um trouble of the artist. They have to let it go at that point. It's no longer theirs. It now belongs to the public. Well, I think that's one thing the you know, that kind of that's that's a good point on that. Um Especially for personal use, that's in 
I, I like the idea that if I buy a movie, I can edit the movie for my own watching and that kind of thing. And I have fun with that re-editing, <coughs> re-editing movies. Um, I did that recently with, uh, with Seven. Because uh, my girlfriend wanted to watch Seven but didn't want to watch a lot of the gore and violent parts in that. Um, so I went through and I, you know, darkened all of the scenes with that in it. And uh, I was, once I was editing it, I realized most of it, most of it was psychological anyway. There wasn't really a ton of gore in that after I was editing it. But I went through and edited it and showed her that version of it. So I've got an edited version of that. Uh, I think the problem that they ran into is when they were starting to sell it. And they're selling it as that movie. They, they say it's an edited version of that movie. Uh, but there's still... It, it, that, that comes into the legal issue once you're, once you're selling a copy of that. Is it, I mean, yeah, that's just the thing, is, is that, is it still, I mean, would this, would Flix Club, would Clean Flix have to pay royalties to, just, yeah. or, or just like any rental video place would have to? And then at that point, I mean, the people that they have to pay royalties to, they have every right to just refuse. Yeah, and I think the, well, what, I mean, I mean, not that I'm necessarily agreeing with this, but I'm just saying, like, legally, that's, I mean, yeah. it's just like going to 7-Eleven, they can just say, no, we're not selling you. Yeah, well, what about when they bought their own DVDs, brought them into the stores, and then have them edit them? Yeah, when, Clint, when Clint Flix was doing it that way, I think that was the right way to do it. Yeah. Uh, because they're doing a one-for-one one copy, and people bring in the movie, they edit it for them, and it's more of a, it's a personal thing. But then, then you get into, like, the viewer. Like, even they, they admit it. They're like, yeah, we didn't, it wasn't fully followed. And well, lot, yeah, all the stores of, weren't doing it. They weren't following people weren't doing it. Yes. Which is the other thing, that was the thing of the morality issues where they're saying it's immoral to watch these edited movies, but then... The stores are doing the immoral practices of making the duplicate really copies, copies and stuff. So, um, but you know what, though? If the companies were willing to sell these DVDs and they'd be more protected, they wouldn't have that problem. Yeah. Either they, could, either they can release them or they can license out these editors to do them. Oh. Uh, the thing is, if they release the copies that they have for the airplanes, then they've got, a little, they've got more studio control over them. Yeah. Uh, whereas when they're letting these guys edit them, it's even though they say that they they do a better job with editing the movies, it's still not in their hands. Mm -hmm. So it's they don't have the control over the products. I mean, when you looked at the the stuff they were renting out, they were just like DVRs, and it's so easy to copy those. Yeah, yeah. Like you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I know. I mean, I don't know. Well, like you can see in the film, they show their DVDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. But I think the problem when you get to that point is you get people who just want to make money at that point. Yes. Like the original guy, um, he, he, I felt like he was sincere and he really wanted to just make these family-friendly movies of yeah. these of these movies that everybody says are really good, but that a normal church going Mormon wouldn't go out and see. Yeah. Well, he was, uh, Ray Lines, he was interested in both ed uh, editing them and getting the copies and also wanted, he, when he saw he could turn it into a business, he was happy with that and was, was making profit from that. He went and moved it online as soon as he could um, and that's when he sold off his stores and as soon as the lawsuit came in, he dropped it, he ended his service, he's like, sorry guys, it's illegal, can't do something that's illegal, we're done. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he was out of it at that point. And as everyone else started up, he was like, That's, if, if they want to do it, they can do it, but they're, n n they, they know they're facing lawsuits, and they, like, he was out of it. But someone like uh, Daniel Thompson, uh. who, <laughs> who put on the face, he, he was saying he was doing it for, at, at some points he said he was doing it because he wanted people to have access to the clean movies. At other points he was saying it was a business. Like when, yeah. the first time that he, he, his store had to close down and he went to the clothing store, he was like, it was a business, I'm moving on to another business now. Yeah. And then when he found a loophole to come back in, he was like, oh, I need to get these movies out there. Yeah. But it was just because all the other stores were closing down and he had now a he bigger part of the market. He had all the business. Yes. So, yes, some people, not the best... It's, it's like in any, any religion where you see someone that, any other Christian that says, you know, I'm a Christian, but they're doing all these, these terrible, terrible things. things. And they, they <laughs> ruin the name for people, or Scientologists, you see the, the ones out there. I know, like, I'm, uh, I, I know Richard Elfman, who's a Scientologist, but he never, he doesn't do the crazy things that the other Scientologists <laughs> do. They doesn't, they're not pushing it on other people, especially too. I mean, he's a crazy guy. But that has nothing to do with the, the Scientology of it. And I don't know all the tenets of it to know whether he's following all of them, but there's, there's different degrees of that. 
So I think it's the same way some people put a bad name on the LDS. Yeah. And uh, especially Daniel Thompson. And not only just putting a bad name on LDS, because he started taking up all of these Clean Flix companies, or Flix Club, and just putting the now, X on it. Now, what, what I'd like to bring up, because I think there's like an ironic coincidence here, yes. is, um, or maybe like an analogy here, is that I feel like him, for the LBS, is exactly like, for the Hollywood people, these movies that are edited now. Aha. Uh -huh. So you're saying with him... He's a bad representation. Yeah. Just like these edited movies are. Because he's, he's calling himself LDS. Yes. And, but in reality, he is an immoral person from at least his well, well, copying of these DVDs. I mean, I think we, all smell, I think we all smell something. Some, what it, whatever it is, it has, it's somewhere around him. Yes. <laughs> everyone, everyone started seeing um, something, something wrong with him. There's, there's something not right like going guy, on there, and it seems like it's on his end. Especially the, the one guy, uh, Robert Perry, who was operating the Clean Flick store with an X. Uh, Clean Flicks with an X. He was, he was operating it, and he seemed to be, as far as this documentary was showing, he seemed to be an upstanding guy. Yeah. And he would, he, he sold the edited movies when they were available, and once the lawsuit happened, he, it seemed like, it, I think he was just renting normal movies, the PG and, uh, and G movies. It didn't seem like he, because he said, yeah. it, you know, once it, it, it was illegal to do, he was done with that. Um, and he was saying that the one guy, there was one guy who would come into the store every day, rent a ton of movies, and oh he yeah, him, he knew. He, he knew told him he was just yeah. watching the. He told him he was just watching them as he worked. And Robert Perry, as right. a as a good guy, he believed that this guy had goodness in his heart and was just watching the movies, and he believed him. And that's a that's that's something that sadly happens to a lot of good natured people. Is they if you're too good natured, you don't suspect something mm -hmm. malicious in these people that are taking advantage of them. Uh, and that guy was copying movies for Daniel Thompson. And then they cut him off, and then he started copying from other places. And then they cut to the interview with Dan Thompson. He said, "Oh, I was renting. I was getting my movies from one source, and now I'm getting them, but buying them." It's like I'm not doing the bad thing. Yeah, I was like, I don't know if these guys happen to be copying the movies. That's not on me. I just sell them. I don't know. <laughs> so and then you start seeing like there's something there's something odd about this guy. I don't know if we can necessarily trust him. Well, one thing that I liked was how he was talking about how why he was doing it. You know, he's doing it for the people and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they cut to, like, his Beamer. And then he has, like, three <laughs> other vehicles. Yeah. Like, nice vehicles and his big house with the old duels. Yeah. And he's, like, dancing and around. And he really liked attention. You know, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, like, I'm about to say, yeah. like, he could turn, like, just turn this into a non-profit. Like, <laughs> that would buy you a lot of cred. Yeah. That would buy you a lot of more <laughs> cred when you're going into, like, huh? Would but buy you a Beamer. he can't yeah. turn that into a non-profit. <laughs> he could turn it in an office, but he can't do that. Right. That's not, oh, yeah. that's not what he would do. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, he, yeah, he, and I'm sure a lot of people in Utah would be totally on board to make, you know, to yeah. work on this and make mm -hmm. it legitimate and nonprofit and everything. But he, he liked to put himself out there as the, as the face of it because it, as putting him as the star of it, one, it grew his business and grew in the town as being like, this is the guy to come to for edited movies. Yeah. But also he seemed to, he definitely liked himself a bit. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Sure yeah. In, in the first Clean Flicks commercial that they show, that it looked like it he made, he just plays, he's a guy in the office, he's the first guy in the office, and he's not, not really the star of it. And then after that, all the other, the other commercials seem to be, it's just, it's, it's him. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Mascotting it. Yes. So, let's see. Part mm -hmm. two, Flesh and Blood. Oh, the Varsity Theater. The Varsity Theater in Provo, Utah, at BYU. So, they were right. editing movies for years yes. at, the, at the theater, and it's for the students to see, for educational purposes, to and see then there's these that. films. And then in 1980, uh, 1998, they edited Schindler's List. And again, with, like with Titanic, with them getting away with the nudity in there because of the historic piece of the film, Schindler's List, as Spielberg, Jewish... Making Schindler's List. Right, right, it's, right. It's a very protected film. The, as he's showing, like, this is what happened at the time. This is historically accurate, and he wants people to see that because of what it is and to show, to show people the magnitude of what went on Right, there. right. And so it was, it was for that his purpose. He didn't want it to be edited because that takes away from what it is. And it, so, in, in his vision of it, he's saying if you don't, if you watch this film and you don't see the atrocities of it, then you can, you, it doesn't have that same weight to it. It would be like it would be like a, a editing. Um, oh God, I can't think of the actual name. I'm sorry, Jesus Chainsaw Massacre. 
Uh, oh, Jesus Chainsaw Massacre? Whatever it's called. Uh, it's Passion no, Gibson. Christ. Yes. Okay. Uh. Jesus Chainsaw <laughs> I forgot. A friend of mine called it that and it stuck in my head. I couldn't remember the actual name. Oh That's, my God. I mean, there wasn't a chainsaw, but I guess it kind of... I'm sorry. Was like, I'm sorry. Yeah. That was the name that I, was, I, it, I, It's a catchy name. I agree with that too, but they did edit that. They did release an edited uh. version of, of uh, Passion of the Christ. No, but Mel they Gibson the, did, didn't yeah, he? Mel yeah, Mel Gibson did. Yeah. He made he made the oh. Easter version of it, which would he so so that more audiences could see it. Right. And that was the, that was the thing I see in his artistic vision of the original one. It's sh the reason he had the violence in there is he wanted to to hammer it into people's heads. This was <laughs> yeah. suffering. He was tortured, and like it was. I mean, yeah, it was grotesque, wow. and it was, but it it definitely made you think about that. Yeah. People watching the edited version would have are already very familiar yes. with all they, the blood and gore. They, they don't need to it. see it. I think it's for the the audiences that don't know that too. And there's, yeah. I, it's it's an educational thing. It's there, it's trying to hammer it into the people who don't already get it. Yeah, I think that's that's the thing of it. But you know, what, going back to what she was saying, like she's gonna turn her head anyway. Yeah. Like, what's the difference between? Doing it the way they're doing somebody going like la 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 la. But it's, okay, it's over. But, but she knows when to you know when to turn your head on these things. Yeah, um, there are gonna be people who aren't e who aren't even going to rent or buy these movies, regardless yeah. if they're not gonna watch the scenes. They're not even gonna consider You, you can't yeah. turn your head at, at uh, language too, and you don't know when that's gonna come mm -hmm. up. And that's one of the things it according to <clears throat> what the prophet said, you're not allowed to you know, watch these things and listen to those things. You're not, you're, you can't hear that. And you're going to accidentally see part of that or hear part of that. So that's the thing. You can't just rely on turning but, your But what I was things. saying, though, is as far as the artistic part, how you want to get that across. I mean, there's people that are going to be sitting in the theater watching half of it and then making out the other half. Yeah. Like, they have but real, no real control. Basically, they want, it's like they want to shove this down their throat and this is exactly how I want you to see it. And when you're paying money to see it and, you know, take, buying the DVD... Is that really fair? I personally, I don't think it is to say you you're unable. Like how you're saying with seven. Yeah, yeah. So it should be. And one of the things they're editing them in this school, and it's definitely. And it seems to me that would be the most educational place to watch them as this the theater for the school. And yet, when they after the lawsuits filed, they then bring up. He says that. They found the loophole where, for educational purposes, yeah. you can edit the films. Right. Even, and and this theater was shut down, even though they were showing them educationally. And uh, I mean that. I mean that. That's. I know. That's. It's a shame that that theater was shut down in the first. Yeah, I think that was a really. That's a shame. Yeah. I really don't like that that happened personally. Um, that sucks. For. The students there and everything. And yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a. They, no, they don't have the option of watching this. Innocent even it's bystander casualty. But it, even in that instance, what what's really going to happen if they just allow these people to edit the films and watch them at the school? Yeah, it. I think it, the problem is was because it was Schindler's List, and they were trying to. It, part of that is the the way that they're trying to market the film in the same way that you see with um, the Weinstein Company does, mm -hmm. like with Bully, when they're saying they wanted Bully to be seen. With its uh, uh, to be shown at a there was it like a PG rating, even though it had the F word in it. And oh yeah, because they wanted all the kids. They to wanted see kids it. to be able to see it. And they're like, this is how kids are talking. Mm -hmm. So it should be okay for the kids to see how kids are talking in this. However, a lot of that was done because what the Weinstein Company likes to do is they create these controversies. Yeah. So then it gets publicity for the film, and then more people see it. So they, it's their free publicity by by news media. And so that could be what Spielberg was doing with Schindler's List. Just making an example. Of yeah, it. and it's sad to hear about the uh, to, to think about that because it's <clears throat> if you if he isn't, we hope that he's not doing it for to for marketing for free reason, and that he's doing it for, for free, free publicity because yeah. he doesn't really need free publicity on a lot of his films. It, well. Big budget <laughs> stuff. I mean. <laughs> People generally know. Probably not at the time. Not at the time. Like, <laughs> I mean, look, at 98, if he's done Jurassic Park, he's done yeah. the big budget films, he, they've got the money to, to market the film. So I would think that, especially for that film, from everything I know of it, that he's done it for artistic purposes. And he's mm -hmm. truly trying to just keep his artistic vision intact. And that if people want to see it, keep it intact for that. But 
it is something that it gains media attention and people want to see it. And like they were brought up in the film, uh, when they see an R-rated trailer, then they know that that's a movie that they're going to make money on uh, in the edited market. Mm -hmm. And that the, we're, the more violent, the more uh, vulgar a movie is in theaters, then the more demand there is for the edited version of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, well, it gives people hearing. I think, I think there's a threshold where that's untrue. Well, yeah, when it gets to the sensing yeah. levels or, or something like yeah. that, those are things that they can't edit. But even like Saw, they were saying they, they have edited versions of that. And so I think those are things people get the <laughs> That would be wow. easy to edit, though. Yeah. Saw? Yeah, there's, there's yeah. really not a I actually, I mean, I, I haven't seen the film because I'm not a huge horror film fan, so. Oh. Yeah. I don't those know. It just sounds crazy to me that. I don't know from what it I've does, heard of it, but, but those are one of my favorite movies. So I've seen, I yeah. I own all of them. I, I love I love all those ones. But and you know, they showed a movie like Hostel, which the whole point of it was to show gore. Like you cut that out, it's yeah. not really a movie at that point. Yeah, but I don't think yeah. that I think that's one of the that's movies one that they probably watch. wouldn't do. No, I, yeah. I looked. I oh really? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, on there. Yeah, uh, Hostel. Uh, I was like, what Hostel? That's not a movie anymore. That's <laughs> well, it's a it's group of clips that doesn't make sense. So people, so people go on a vacation. And uh, then credits roll for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know who was thinking about it. Yeah, this is a nice <laughs> short film. Who decided that <laughs> what a lovely day. That was I was surprised with like Back to the Future. I was trying to figure out what did they cut out from Back to the Future. Um, it's probably because the mother it's uh, the, oh. comes on to the side. Yeah, that's because uh, they were saying like even in Fargo they cut out the scene where they're talking about. That the guy was circumcised. They like, yeah. they can't talk about. But then they didn't cut out other things. They could have didn't cut out the wood chipper part. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which I was surprised. I was so. They're eco friendly. Well, that's something that's not, not what? just that's not just in in LDS book. That's uh, that's on television too, where you that's everywhere. Where but, 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 in American culture, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm saying. Well, I mean, in American this is culture, a there's, there's always more lenient, them, There's like. more leniency towards violence than there is towards sexuality. A lot of times there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, on television, you're able to show but, violence but, but, more. But we're not going by TV moral standards. I know. I'm saying in that in that. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going by these guys' standards. No, but I'm saying their 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 standards reflect that. It yeah. seemed, it seemed to... sexual sexual transgression is far worse than say killing. Right. Somebody. I mean, it's far worse but because I killing still, I killing stuff is more is a thing that uh, that's definitely a lot in the Bible as well yeah. with the conquering of other of other peoples. Yeah. And that kind of thing. So there's. Uh, that's I, yeah. That's more acceptable. It's a lot of sex. In the I guess I. I guess there I is. Yeah, yeah, there. Not, yeah, there is. But a lot of, yeah. <laughs> and that should be censored out of the Bible. Yeah. I'm just saying. I've heard plenty of fun arguments about that one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's shown it. It's shown in different ways in that. There's there's the uh, the people that get smited for what they do on some if they do it wrong. But then mm -hmm. if they do it correctly, it's fine. And it's that's the cutting out of the immoral stuff and the things that go against that. But then, but the slaughtering of other nations, if you're doing it for a good purpose, then it's all good. So, hmm. yeah. So that, that's why they can be more lenient on the violence in that. Um, one, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, uh, Neil LeBute, um, who was a former uh, member of the church um, and playwright and director, um, he was saying that uh, one of the reasons that they were cut, he was trying to make films that were introspective about the church and talking about why they think these things. Mm -hmm. um, and he was saying that uh, LDS don't like to uh, explore, that they're not looking for answers because they've got the answers in that. So how, how do you think about that statement? I think it's very true. Um, you know, growing up in the church is very, they tell us, like they have all these stories and they teach us all these different things that get, basically give us it's kind of like we have the answers to life. That's what it feels like. And it's like, and so then we know that what we're doing here on earth, what we need to do is just follow the rules. Just be good. Be good people and follow the rules. And if we can, if we can just do that, then we'll be fine. Okay. I was, yeah, I was wondering about that because that's, that uh, for me in, in the church I grew up in, it was always encouraged to, uh, to think critically and to explore things. And I knew that that was something that's even in, in other Christian religions, it's not uh, something that they usually encourage. Um, it's, it, it usually is that, that set of rules. So it's just because I hadn't grown up with that one. Uh, I didn't know if that would sound like insulting to them to say that, that they, they'll just not explore. 
No, I mean, we study a lot. Yeah. We go through the scriptures so much. I, like every day um, through high school, I would wake up at five in the morning and go to church before school. And that's what I did for four years. And, wow. you know, they, you, they have classes. Yeah. They have, obviously, we have three yeah. hours of church on Sunday. And then we're always studying. But because we're always studying the scriptures, we feel like we already know what we need to do. We just need to do it. Okay. So, so it's, it's not like we don't. It, well, yeah, you're, ex it's, but you're exploring the, the answers in the scriptures. So yes. Yeah. That just holds all of the information that you need to know. Mm hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So, all right. So, that was, yeah, that's the question I had about. So, his, his statement was accurate on that. And then in kindergarten cop, they cut out penis and vagina. They said those words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Little well, you know, that. I mean, that's, that's their choice, I guess. Uh, the, the exact line is, uh, boys have a penis, girls, girls have, have a vagina. vagina. One of the best lines in the movie. Yeah, you gotta cut that out, because that's, you can't know that. And they changed ferret, too, because you can't have ferret, so. It's a cat, <laughs> it's really odd. Uh, I didn't catch that. Wait, really? I'm, just kidding. No, I'm like, what? <laughs> no, you <laughs> Tony makes up. Yeah, he's just trolling. All right, we're, yeah. let's move on. Troll the All right. So yeah, we talked about um, yeah the two sides of the argument where they were saying it was the art, the battle between the filmmaker saying this is my movie, I want it to be seen this way, and the owners, the clean flex people, and all the people who own the movie saying this is my copy of the movie. I can do what I want. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's been an a issue everywhere for all, it's about uh, all of media, so, not, just, yeah. not just in the editing software, that's yeah. in remixing, that's... It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's slowly solving itself in that. Yeah, that kind of Creative Commons thing works out a yeah. lot more. When it, uh, I, like, I, I like it when an artist will give the, the attribution of non-commercial uh, editing. So, like, you, can, you can edit this and do whatever you want, you can remix this. This you can, can have it, if, but if you're making money off of it, that's yeah, not okay. That's not okay. Because I made the original thing. I mean, if you work out a deal with me and yeah. we can make a profit off of that, then sure. But you have to give credit to the original artist. That's why I'm like nonprofit, nonprofit. Yeah, non that would be so non good. Nonprofits would be uh, amazing if they had done yeah, this for nonprofit. And it's the good. educational <laughs> thing. But when they're when you start turning a profit on it, that's, that's calling it money. educational and making money. Yeah, yeah that's that's sense. when you're running into the issue with it. So, <sighs> editing did with nonprofits. Oh, I liked seeing Gil Cates in there. He was the former dean at UCLA Theater, Film, and Television School. Oh, oh he didn't, yeah, yeah, They didn't yeah. say that in there, but um, yeah, the, he was the dean when I started going there. Um, my last year, it switched out. It was another dean. But uh, it took me the second watching of it. I, I saw him like, oh, yeah, it's that guy. He used to lead all the discussions in the, uh, in the film school. He's a cool guy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like seeing him in there. But I guess he was sued. He was part of the Directors Guild. Oh, so, oh okay. Yeah, he was in that lawsuit, which was the... Wow. It was the lawsuit of... They said they thought the Directors Guild was going to sue Clean Flicks. So one guy who operated one Clean Flicks store yeah. said, Oh, you think you're going to sue us? I'm going to sue, sue you guys. They started the entire lawsuit and then he dropped out and then Clean Flicks had to back it up. So the Directors Guild wasn't going to sue. They were just saying, We don't like what you're doing. We wish you wouldn't do this. Please don't do this. I could, they're yeah. all <laughs> free oranges. Free oranges. And then the guy sued. Like, that's one of the, you don't preemptively sue someone. <laughs> yeah, that made me upset. Well, yeah. Mr. I want attention. Right. And it wasn't even, it wasn't even Daniel yeah, Thompson who did it. It was this other guy who... Oh, was it? I don't yeah, it wasn't him. It, it kind of, it, it took me until the second watching to, to see that it wasn't him. Yeah. yeah, it was some other guy. I have his name somewhere, but hmm. he was just like, he, Daniel, uh, Dan Potter. Well, Dan Potter to, Potter about the lawsuit. to the discredit of that film... Of this film, that should have been more well. Yeah, they should have. They should have put it more. They well just like said. put it a little off. The this problem is, was with they this went, is who, you know, it's yeah. not this guy. Or whatever. They went to a clip of, 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 of uh, uh, Daniel Thompson right after they said the lawsuit was filed. Oh, that kind of, so that made it look like it was him doing so it. So should have gotcha. Yeah. But it wasn't him because if he were the face of that, then it would have had a lot more trouble with that. Yeah. So he was still the face of things, but he was he didn't want to go to court with it. It's <clears throat> gosh, it's so weird because on the one with this guy. 
Uh, what's his name? David? Is that his name? Daniel Thompson. Daniel Thompson. Thank you. Like he was all. Of, it seems like he's just all about the business and making the money and everything. And then on the other side, you know, he's trying to do this. Oh, I'm just trying to make sure that everyone has this capability. But and, and to be honest, I think that he really, you know, he is about the business of it and making yeah. the money. Yeah. But to, but then on on the same point, I'm like, why is he drawing so much attention to himself then? It doesn't make any sense. Because he, I, part some, of being a narcissist people, and just yeah. he wants attention. And he doesn't doesn't realize the the fault of that. Yeah. And there were the other they, they went and interviewed other companies that said that uh, were saying like we don't want don't film us. We don't want attention here. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they blocked them out. They're like we we can only operate because we're not Which is attention. really smart. But but I thought it was really really side note funny thing was that um went on those people that, you know, said, Oh, I don't want you filming. They, and they had the, the little thing that said CEO of this and I'm all like, yeah. How hard is it to go uh, CEO of this and find out this guy's name in a picture? I'm like, yeah, but oh well. <laughs> I'm all like, they should have. I will. I don't know. I realize how long we we're talking for. <laughs> we cut already. How long? Oh, I'm sure the video's already cut. The audio is still going. Oh, okay, cool. All right, this is a podcast now. <clears throat> oh, cool. This is why I wish I had my two-hour camera on here. Um, I so, didn't realize it was going so fast. Oh, is it not? So, is that plugged in? <laughs> no, it's not plugged in. It's got this. Well, the, the battery lasts, but there's only an hour's worth of video on that thing. Oh. So now that one's done. It's been about an hour. Interesting. It's been a while. Do you want to yeah. see what? Do you want to see when it cut? Yeah, just maybe cut. maybe it like just cut not too long ago. Well, it doesn't really matter too much because it's we know it's just cut. Yeah. Oh, oh we just forgot to turn it on. Wait, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the on, oh, the on button. Oh, maybe the version. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was on. It says it has twenty-four minutes left. Yeah, so while oh, I, yeah, I mean, I, I knew I did see the light earlier. I think. Yeah. So. No, I saw a lot of. I checked it earlier. I said record. It has 24 minutes left, so it means it recorded 34, uh, 32 minutes. Uh, How many parts are there? Yeah, there's some more parts. Well, we'll, ju we'll jump to. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just keep moving. The best part? This. Yeah, we'll jump to the best part. But uh, <laughs> this will be interesting editing. I don't know. This, we cut out all of the stuff where it got raunchy, I guess. <clears throat> no, we didn't, because we're about to get to that. Um, Is this going to be a clean YouTube's? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to put the, uh, the edited tag on there. Oh, I do like the clip they showed of Be Kind Rewind, because I hadn't even thought about that in the argument. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, that, that clip kind of spoils what Be Kind Rewind is. But the idea of they make the movies themselves. And um, that's that argument. Their, their problem was they're using the copies of the tapes. Anyway, so let's see. 2006, Clean Flicks Lewis. Um, Daniel Thompson illegally duplicating copies for his business move. It's a smart business move. Uh, stores were doing well. Yeah. Dan Thompson selling off his DVDs. Sign the petitions. Here we go. So there's a big twist in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> this is what, like seven years later? <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan. Seven or yeah, eight this leaves. is 2007. The, the film starts in like 2000. So it's yeah. Like, yeah. About this, seven years later. Seven years. Seven years <laughs> later into this. Um, after there's already some sketchy things about Daniel Thompson. And this whole this, this is pretty far into the movie. <laughs> We're watching this movie about the battle of the legality of this of, of doing yeah. clean flags. <laughs> <of this. laughs> and there's just Dan Thompson is up to this point. He's he's just one guy who's doing all this stuff. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, his ex girlfriend has a quote about him. <laughs> uh, that he says they they go on their first date, and this is before we know anything about him, and we just know that he's he's got this question of business practice. She's like, oh yeah, on our first date, he said to me. In quotes, <clears throat> I know you used to be Mormon, but would you be willing to have sex from behind? And that's where we first start thinking, what is this? <laughs> Where's this going? <laughs> yeah, that was exactly my thought. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> Something's a little. And then, and then the guy who's operating the other, the Clean Flex, the other Clean Flex store, said there was some rumor of him selling underage porn yeah. in his store, mm -hmm. and that he was uh, wanting to get. Underage, he was saying, trying to get a business started of, of putting up pictures of underage girls in panties and yeah, clothing. And Not naked, like, Not naked. I thought he was okay. just running this. I, like, so we think he's just a sleazy businessman, but then we no, realize no, there's, more, a little, there's a little more crime on that. His immorality goes a little further. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <clears throat> because he's made his. Once, once the accusations come out with uh, paying two 14-year-old girls for sex, 
the accusation, accused of paying the 14 year old girl for sex. There is no evidence, no, no uh, full evidence on that, no, no video or anything to, to show that. He, uh, the, the court said that if they had been 13, then he, no matter what, he would have gone to jail for life. But yeah. yeah, he still went to jail for, well, he sentenced for two years, and I think it was like, yeah, well, he, yeah, and then he got on house arrest after. Yeah, yeah. it was like forty six days and then house arrest. But you know, I think there was a video, but they clean flicked it. So. Yeah, well, they. Of course, he edited that out. Uh, <laughs> He's just doing his job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. he made they, the video. But they did find a stash of porn. Yes. And right. yeah, so. Uh, yeah. Well, th well, then you know he goes on later to say. Well, I didn't know they were paid for anything. I didn't know they were given money. Oh, he, oh, oh with, the, with the other guy, with the, the $20... Yeah, yeah, the $20 right, thing. Right, right, right. And, and then he says they talked for a minute. But they talked for why a, would he yeah, even say anything about I didn't know that they were paid for anything? Like, it was just weird all around. Well, he just, he, they just said he denied all the accusations. And, and that was the thing. And it was... I think the... the it, it, it was probably because in the court they asked him. Yeah, um, that was probably they just asked the line of line said, questioning was did you know they were this? No, they were paid. paid. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because so, that's defining what the crime is, whether it was yeah. prostitution or just underage sex. Part of, part of it, though, because they found the stash of porn, that already shows that there's that it's not completely clean in the clean flick store. Right. That 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 showed that part. So when he was when he talked about the psychosexual evaluation that he was going under and. The way he was talking about it, he seemed to be protesting a little too much in his... I don't know, though. That's a one, one time where I kind of felt bad. What if he is telling the truth and he is, like, legit LDS? I mean, that's a horrible experience to go through. It if, is. A, yeah. If, if yeah, he was if telling he the was, truth, that's, if he was, that's pretty yeah. traumatic. It's kind of... It's that... And the, they showed the clip of Clockwork Orange in there and that kind of uh, thing where they're... Exposing yeah. him yeah, to that immorality. It's a great analogy right there. <laughs> so to like to test if he was immoral, they're showing him the immorality that he, that he should be avoiding. Yeah. Now, unless, so if the stash of porn was planted there. Well, I mean, not even <laughs> right. right. What, if we just, what if he just likes porn? I mean, just, well, yeah, but if he does, if he does, then even then, that, like, even even going going away from the underage stuff. Um, if he just likes porn. Then the way he was talking about the evaluation, the way he was saying that these accusations, how much he was saying these accusations were false, mm -hmm. by not admitting to anything, he's now making himself look more guilty. Okay, that part I'm not sure, because I don't remember if he said he doesn't watch porn. No, he didn't say he didn't watch porn, but he was, the way he was, the way he was saying how terrible it was him sh showing these people doing sexual acts, even just with people their own age and stuff like he uh -huh. the pain that he showed in that it seemed like he was showing a bit too much pain for that for what he what we think he, he does but if he if he is truly a true <laughs> let's Mormon, say that you have to believe that the evidence was and planted you, and you have this rubber band yeah, on your dick and like everybody's there watching you and like that's got to be... It's pretty terrible. Well, first of all, I don't think that that's not a good, you know, that's not a controlled environment that, to that's, actually that's, test him in the Well, that, that, that's what I was thinking too is that he could just be... Like yeah. he, could have, he could have had honesty in that moment only because he was upset about yeah. all the, that. The, the, yeah, the not necessarily watching all the stuff on the screen. The embarrassment of being that. So that's of, a, yeah, I mean, the test is terrible yeah, the in the first place. Yeah. He's not going to start <laughs> jerking off and like, oh, yeah. uh, he's a little kid. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So... And so then he's made, so he's made himself the face of Clean Flix. God. By putting himself in the, uh, he's made himself the face of Clean Flix, and now all these allegations come out to him, and of course the press loves the contradiction of that. Oh, so it's yeah. like, oh look, the Clean Flix guy, he did all this stuff. Yeah. And now Clean Flix gets all of that bad things. So they're like, we didn't do this. Yeah, yeah. No one else all did this, that. All the media had No other that. person that was editing movies had this immoral stuff with them. They were just trying to edit the movies. And sure, they were skirting the law try because they said they weren't allowed to. But they're like, we want people to see these movies and we want them to be edited. But you know what? Amen to all of those people. Seriously, because I'm all about like civil disobedience. And yeah. So they're, they're That's so up. awesome. Man. No, Go yeah. you. They're standing up for it. They're still doing it. But this standing one guy is ruining it for everyone. Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. And that's, that's the problem. He was the only one gaining media attention. Yeah. He, he was inviting all of the news to everything. So one guy destroys the entire it's a troll, thing. and it was the one of the one of the titles earlier is David versus Goliath. They're saying the people versus the big studios, mm -hmm. but really, like this is that one man against a giant, but one man ruining the entire thing. Yeah, he's yeah. screwing it up for everyone. And I think that's where this 
this whole thing comes down to if, if this movie. And it's like, really is a shame. I mean, if, yeah. if this would have came to California, I guarantee my mom would have got these videos over the other stuff we were watching. Yeah. yeah. Even paid an extra dollar or two. It's like, the, there's people that will do it. This yeah. is the one guy that ruins it for everyone in, in every, like, in the free speech arguments and in everything, there's always the one guy. In the gun arguments, there are the people, the people who do these shootings, they ruin it for everyone that wants to own these guns as collectors, as shooting oh, them. Oh, man, I know. I one feel bad. For all of these, and he's, I feel <laughs> bad for gun owners. I get upset. I mean, I don't really like them, but I feel I have, bad. I have I a friend I get in an argument with because I believe, is it. the light still on? I can't even see. No, it's not. No? All right, I'm going to check it again. It turned off a little while ago. I just, I kind of gave up because you said 24 and it clearly didn't go for 24. And yeah. I'm like, you know what? Podcast. Well, I think it's, I think the battery might be an issue on here or something. It says 22 minutes. It went for two minutes. All right. <laughs> if the light turns off again, let me down. know. I'll, uh, I'll have to pause because I want to get at least an ending out of this. Okay. If we can get an ending to the video, then I'll be happy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, <clears throat> we were talking one about guy this. ruins it. Ruins everyone. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll put like a little image or something over the audio and get the audio out. Right? I'll find some. I'll find <laughs> some movie, video. Still. movie clips. Next movie clips. Yeah. Next week will be good. Yeah. Next week we'll get a, a full episode. This is, first episode always has to be bad. Okay, so I, I have an argument with my friends constantly about uh, about freedom of speech on the internet, and I like the I I, I always push for that there should be no censorship on the internet. This yeah. internet yeah. is just it's a it's a sandbox for everyone to use. You're never going to be able to do it. The like, argument she always brings up is child God. porn. Oh, yeah. And then in child porn, I'm like, and this is why I hate people who make child porn, because like you're ruining it for everyone. No. Now, go on. What are you going to say? Uh, <laughs> but, I don't know what you're going to say on this. But, but. Okay. Freaking um, light. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, I don't think that's going to happen. No, it's uh, not going to happen, but I'm going to keep doing it. But I think. Um, oh, hold that thought for a second. Uh, I was going to grab some of the batteries. I don't know. Do you have a second battery for that? <laughs> I have some other batteries, I think. I don't know. But I mean, with the, with the censorship in the internet, and you, you bring up child porn and um, how that's ruining it for everyone because now everyone wants to censor the internet. Um, well, I mean, like with child. Well, I guess I just um, I'm not up to date on. It's what's the going action on of them getting that. the child porn in the first place. What 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 another one of my friends is arguing is if it was if it was computer simulated. Think of it that way. Well, that's the new thing. That's what they're talking about. Yeah. So that it's not hurting anyone there. The problem is, it's the thing of like people getting it, having it, screw you, stupid light. Well, uh, okay, okay. I mean, okay. Let's just go hentai, right? Yeah. That's there. So it's I'm not, sure there's child porn out there somewhere. The thing is, it's not hurting anyone, but then the people still get that. Get the, yeah. We have that. But either either way, those are the like it's these the people that take it to extremes, or the people that then they ruin it for everyone else. Right. Yeah. Well, it's weird. The whole morality of the issue is bizarre. Yeah. yeah. Mormons are pretty bizarre. I actually, <laughs> I actually wasn't even referencing Mormons. I wasn't referencing totally referencing Mormon about. religion at all. I was just talking about. Well, one, one thing they, they bring up in this film is that the, he was they're saying because the Mormon faith is so strict that this was like the outlets become really extreme. And the, with some people, the people that go oh, yeah. go off the rails, they go off the rails crazy. Like this guy could have. It's possible. Yeah. That. And it, you see like the South Park creators who then go. It really is, yeah. They push the envelope of well, the extremity they, because they're, they brought up. A, that's the point of the show for them. <laughs> yeah. Is fighting the censorship bureau. But is it, it could be because that's of their the, they're, because they're brought up in that you can't do this, you can't do this. and then Yeah, exactly. A lot of, oh, at least a lot of Mormons nowadays, like growing up the younger generation, it's very rebellious. Yeah. Oh, very yes. rebellious. I've met a couple young ladies. <laughs> that yeah. school girl type yes. thing and just go. Yeah. But like, but like yeah. more yeah. yeah, but more yeah. 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 So I'm like, like, running the uh, computer company. Uh, and just like, <laughs> Sometimes yeah, it's like the, the, the lighting. Well, yeah, once, once they break, when they when they break away from ours and they just go like, everything, technological wire. I don't know. Yeah, I did it a moment once. <laughs> 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 Uh, I, 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 I guess I, I guess I shouldn't really call her a Mormon. I don't know. Yeah, I did, well, yeah, I did an ex Mormon uh, once, and it was awesome. <laughs> Let me tell you. Sometimes though, they say like it's the lighter the picture, the darker the negative, and that's what ends up coming about. Like that was totally true. Like, like I'm just like, this person is so nuts. <laughs> yeah. She's so I crazy. Like, I, was I was yeah, nuts. <laughs> I've so had crazy. a I had a very interesting college life. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't mean crazy in that like they're so hardcore Mormon. I just meant cra like, like oh man, I felt yeah, like yeah, it was like 
very exactly what you said. Just like the lighter the I can't. It's remember very surprising. Yeah, very it's just surprising. so surprising. Whoa, the stuff that comes out. That's from what them. she said. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> oh God. I gotta get to work too. Uh, okay. <laughs> I just remember that. So uh, <laughs> it was a great discussion with us that I think it was good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good first try of this. Um, so let's discuss. Uh, Stephanie, you want to let us know? Oh, yeah. What, um, what are we going to so have? So the movie talk? for for next week, um, I want, I, I love the idea. I actually kind of cheated a little bit here and talked to him, talked to Jesus, John, Jesus? <laughs> Jesus or John. You didn't introduce yourself at the beginning. <laughs> I did. I you said, did? Oh, yeah, you did. I called myself John. Okay. Well, cool. John. <laughs> I talked to John. Up. I cheated and talked to John a little bit about this beforehand, so... Um, and because uh, I wanted to make sure that at least one of the other hosts hadn't seen it before, because I just think that makes it interesting. Because I've seen this movie, and uh, the movie I picked was Old Boy, which is a foreign film. Uh, it was made fairly recently, kind of two thousand something. Two thousand something. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe somewhere in the two thousands. Yeah, I'd guess around two thousand five, two thousand six. Um, and it is a completely crazy, violent film. Uh, uh, <laughs> is that the Korean one? I special guest doesn't have to be here for next week. So. <laughs> right. We're hoping um, you watch this one. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> is the cover like a guy holding a, a little kid's hand? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you know all the movies. I started video. watching it and I was like, eh. It's, all right, but so now you have to watch it. You have to watch, watch it. Watch it all the way through. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. Definitely watch it all the way through. This is one of those movies you don't turn off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a good movie. Good. I don't know. I don't... Want to give away? Too yeah, much. don't give away, anything. Give away like, anything um, at all. Maybe we can even attach. We know that at least it's a movie that will be up. It'll be good for discussion. Yes, it, that, it so. will be good for, for whether you like it or not. Whatever it doesn't, it will be, you'll be able to discuss it. Yeah. So next for next week, watch Old Boy. Watch Old Boy. Come boy, come back and. Uh, it's Stefan's pick. Stefan's pick. We will watch that. <laughs> I'm excited. All right. Well, I wish we had video for this. I guess we don't. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> sorry, folks. Thank you for watching or listening <laughs> to this episode, our Clean Flex discussion of instant discussions. The yeah, other are are real burned, so the video's gone. <laughs> it's been clean flexed out. It's been completely <laughs> clean fixed out. We were naked the whole time. <laughs> Thank you, Rochelle, for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we come to an end. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Very good. Bye, everybody.